But of course, the idealized world of economic theory doesn't often pertain in the real world. Then there are many instances where people will argue that there are various types of market failures in, in industry or, uh, or some sort of, uh, of activity. And that could be, for example, externalities, a positive externality that people don't take into account, benefits that accrue to society that people don't think about, or a cost that people don't think about, say, pol uh, pollution. So in the instance, in the, in the event that there are market failures, one of the things that governments need to do is to try and figure out, well, what do we do about it? You know, we've got a lot of different things that we could potentially uh, do. What is a, a framework to think about how to identify a proper solution to some sort of market failure? So what I, would, what I want to do in this video is to kind of go through conceptually the steps that a policymaker may use in order to identify what, what to do about these, uh, these problems. So, of course, the, the, the first uh, solution that, that you want to, or the first thing that you want to do, is that you want to identify what the actual problem is and to quantify that market failure. Now often, the first part of this is a lot easier than the second part. So you know that there's, a, you know, there's pollution or you know, some sort of, of a difficulty that the market's not taking into account, but trying to measure the, the exact amount of that, that's, that's a trickier thing to do. But in order to a, a, uh, try and identify a solution to the problem, you not only have to know what the problem is, but you, know, you need to know how big of a problem it is. So it may be hard, but it's, this is unavoidable. Now, uh, economists will often think about the solution to these problems as having a kind of ranking. And so the first thing that you want to try to do is to think about what the so-called first best policy might be. That's not a particularly elegant term, but it actually has a, 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 a quite a straightforward uh, uh, meaning. It is a solution that addresses the market failure directly without unintended consequences in some other parts of society. So let me, let me give you an example. Um, imagine that you have a, a consumer at home and they change oil in the car and they have a, a pan full of used oil, motor oil, and they go dump it in a sewer. Now that, that's nasty stuff and really shouldn't get into the the sewer system, the water system, I mean, there's all sorts of problems with that. But people may do that without really thinking about where that goes. So the best way, the idealized, the ideal way to, do, uh, to take care of that is to have information to people, give information to people, so that they can think about the consequences of, of that action. I kind of, you know, here the market failure is a, is asymmetric information. One, uh, somebody doesn't have full information. And then once they know that, they'll, you know, can potentially adjust their policy. Now you could also take somebody out and flog them, you know, which is not the first best policy, uh, because you're, I mean, that's, that has a lot of unintended consequences. So once you identify the first best policy, you then need to ask, is this administratively feasible? Is it politically feasible? You know, maybe this ideal solution that gets rid of the, the market failure may not be practically possible. So in that instance, you may need to then think about alternatives to the first best solution. So we've got, for example, a, or just uh, to think about these alternative policies. And the, the difficulty with these is that they're causing problems even if they're solving 
the one that we've identified. And that's really the, the, the difficult trade-off. And so among the alternative policies, there may be some that have you know, a nice ratio between the highest possible benefits with the lowest possible uh, costs. But broadly speaking, in choosing among these alternative policies, you want, or economists will argue, that you want to look at both the costs and the benefits. Now, one of the, the difficulties about this in sort of practical terms is that, let's say a government is trying to solve some problem, and they may focus only on the benefits, the good stuff. You know, they've got a target, they're trying to reduce uh, some, um, some activity that's causing difficulties, and, and they undertake the policy, and then there's less of that activity, and they can issue a press release saying, okay, we, we solved that. But what, that may be causing problems somewhere else that they may not highlight. So the analyst wants to think about those and trying to give good advice to a government or as a, as a voter to th want to think about the costs and the benefits. And so let me give you uh, maybe an extreme example. So a lot of people are concerned about greenhouse gases and the, the impact on, uh, on climate. And one of the main sources of that is for automobiles. So automobiles create carbon dioxide, you know, uh, spew it out, and the social consequences of that aren't necessarily taken into account by you know, a person driving the car around. Well, an extreme way to deal with that problem is to ban all cars. Now that seems a little extreme. Implicitly, when somebody says, well, that's too extreme, they're saying the costs outweigh the benefits. So people weigh these uh, in their mind. They may not think about it in a formal way, but you think about these, this kind of stuff all the time. Now, the, the part where economists get, you know, have a little bit different approach is that we tend to say that the best way to do this is when the marginal cost of the intervention equals the marginal benefit of the intervention. We don't so much say, well, let's look at the total cost, the total benefits. If the total costs uh, are less than the total benefits, we should do it. We uh, Economists tend to think about these things in marginal terms. Now, this can get to be uh, controversial. And, uh, again, let me give you an example of where this might... Uh, or an economist may think of this in a very in a very different way. An economist would would often say that there might be an optimal level of pollution, and that is when the marginal cost of the pollution equal the marginal benefit of producing that. And so, an intervention would would try and equate those two things. Now. I'm not going to get into here whether or not you know the ethics of that or the morality of that or whatever, but it, economists will tend to think of policy measures that get to the solution having this being one, one of the underlying um, criteria in order to find a solution uh, to uh, an efficient solution to the to the market failure. So not to ban pollution, not to ban things that may, you know, to, not to ban cigarettes, but instead to think about ta taxing cigarettes or taxing production in, a, in, a, uh, uh, in a, an industry that causes, um, uh, causes um, uh, problems. Now, that, you know, if you kind of push that, that forward, you can imagine a situation where the marginal costs are so high, human, humans dying because of some, some uh, uh, any level of activity that you just, you know, you, 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 uh, uh, you essentially eliminate the activity altogether. But in summary, this is actually, uh, I think, an important part to, of, uh, of, of this course is to think about 
among the possible solutions to market failure, various options. Now in this class, this comes up in a, in a number of different scenarios. For example, in the case of an infant industry, you can argue that the, and, and I do this in other videos, that the, that the underlying problem is a, um, uh, a failure in the capital markets in a country, a tariff may impose costs outweighing the benefits uh, to uh, consumers. The same way in the case of, a, of a, 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 a foreign monopolist operating in a market, the first best may be a price ceiling, which may be equal to marginal cost, which may be unavailable to uh, the, the government in practical terms, so you then start to try and choose other second best policies that keep these costs and benefits in mind. So it's a very it's a very broad concept that's used in international economics and in public policy uh, more generally.